Uh, a good parent, of course, cares and is usually deeply upset when the child leaves. And it would be surprising uh, if the parent weren't upset when the child leaves. Uh, it's a tremendous loss to have invested 18, 20 years of your life in someone and to have them walk out. Uh, so that it's quite normal uh, for parents to feel a loss. There is something in the air which says to parents and children that when that time comes, that the child leaves, that it's, well, goodbye, it was swell while it lasted, <laughs> but goodbye. And I think that's somehow a misunderstanding. I remember having, you know, getting teary thinking about Julie going away to college because we're really close. But I, I don't have that feeling. Maybe it's because I have other interests. Is that, a, is that a valid point? Oh, I think it makes an enormous difference. Uh, as to what happens to the woman or what she is going to be doing, particularly the mother, uh, when the children leave. Uh, if, uh, if, in fact, she has invested most of her energy and time for all the years that she was raising her children in her children, which is a perfectly appropriate thing to do, uh, then if she has not done anything else with her energies except that, then she is suddenly left uh, with an empty. I mean, the sense of empty is really there that there's nothing else to do. Well, as you know, we have the classic extended family, and I, I was thinking that those with a number of children, it, it doesn't seem to be that uh, dramatic. They go one at a time, and you always, there's more there, and they, you know, it, furthermore, they, it doesn't seem like they go away and stay away. They're back and forth all the time. Yeah, you know? but I, from personal experience, I've seen mothers who, when the, uh, you know, the last of four is leaving, she says now, after, yeah. go to school, but on the other hand, she kind of says, don't leave me. I, you know, it's a mental game that I've seen. Yeah, well, I think part. you're both talking about all the, the variations of, yeah. what this, uh, of what this thing is like. There are some families for, for whom when the chi last child leaves, there's a kind of break with parenting. There are some families where the parenting continues with the adult children, even though they're supposed to be more or less launched and on their own. And that's an important difference in, in how one experiences the empty nest. It's not I'm, not, I'm not saying that one should hang on to kids. Uh, but that there is room uh, when the children grow for them to still be a part of your life. I we think my, that Carol and the, and the girls are closer now than they ever were. That phone bill is horrendous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but the phone bill is not the same thing as having to be home mm. and take care of. But it's keeping it's, in touch. Yeah. It's keeping in touch is something that one can do, but I don't, I, I don't know about any particular woman, but there is the question for many women, and not for all women, of what are they going to do? They wake up in the morning and they say, <coughs> what am I going to do? And can it's we, a dreadful, frightening feeling. Can we back feeling. up just a second? Because you were saying that all time and energy, a woman that puts all of time and energy into her children feels this. What about taking care of a husband and wife relationship while the children are growing, knowing that you are going to end up back where you started, together, just the two of you? Well, that certainly is one of the aspects of the empty nest. That is, the children leave, and there you are at breakfast, lunch, dinner, weekends, just the two of you. And it's clear that your relationship has to change. Uh, it's not only that it has to uh, go back to where it was when you were much younger, but that there has to be a kind of rethinking and a re-experiencing of know, what I you're going to mean in each other's lives. I would hope that over the years, the husband and wife have structured their relationship so it grew rather than deteriorated. Well, so when they were alone together, uh, hopefully they still like each other. And that, I guess, is the key, isn't it? Yeah, but we all know those people who get, who split just at the moment that last child leaves the house. And, and what somehow, an awful thing because you've raised It does happen that often. I, well, I've seen it certainly lots mm -hmm. and lots of times. It's a critical moment. I think what one has to see about the empty nest is that it really is a, a kind of stage in the life of the family, in the life of the father, in the life of the husband, in the life of the wife and mother. And that it's a stage that has to be kind of renegotiated. It's really a little bit like, uh, like you know, the first day of school or puberty or college or marriage. I mean, it's a major event. Uh, it can be experienced as a gradual thing depending upon how you have led yourself up to it. Uh, but for many women, it is particularly difficult. There is a clinical syndrome uh, which is associated with the empty nest. I mean, we can describe the empty nest as a time. Mm -hmm. um, we can also describe it as a, as a period for actual depression when women become depressed enough to go to the hospital. What's something a woman can do if she either senses this coming or she's dealing with it now? Well, I think it's terribly important for people to talk about this. I think this program is a, a kind of example of how one can help with this kind of thing. One of the things that happens to a woman uh, with the emptiness that she, is that she is at a certain age in her life. 
she's somewhere between, I don't know, 42 and early 50s, I mean, somewhere in that decade. That's also an age, a middle age for women. It's also the age of the menopause. And there is a lot of pressure from society that is saying to her, well, it was swell while it lasted, it's now over. Uh, and, and, it's v and a lot of women get pushed down by that with the sense that they are no longer mothers, they are no longer people who are going to have children, and also they're not considered um, particularly attractive, well, either I sexually or as people. We they're only have about 30 seconds, but is there one specific thing that a woman can do, uh, you know, an outreach program, get a job, do something to make herself I think she has to see that she has to do something else with her life, with her sense of herself, that the self changes. It's a time for a different view what, of who did. she is. What? We have a 10-year-old nephew living with us now. Oh, <laughs> I don't think we're You don't have an empty nest, nest John. <laughs> and I forgot what a 10-year-old was like. Well, that must be Every tough. dog should have a 10-year-old boy. Every dog should have a 10-year-old <laughs> boy.